Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that? The Karate Kid. Hey, everybody. Happy quarantine. <laughs> Not exactly the way that we wanted to come to you with this whole new uh, idea, but actually... The whole new idea came because of what's going on in the world. So uh, <laughs> this is your host, or one of the hosts. I'm Billy Stewart. You might know me from such podcasts as Scary Dad Podcast whoop, whoop. and guest hosting on other ones. And here with me as for the first time is Mr. Ricky Morgan. Hey, you hey. might know him from such podcasts as all of them. <laughs> introduce yourself t- tell us tell us all where where you've been and where you're going you well, got you got a pretty decent resume for, for all my legion family there i think they're like oh great another show from this guy right but <laughs> uh for all the scary dad fans which i am a fan of as well i think we have a very mutual love for each other's shows and that's kind of how this came about but uh, I've got a, a show with um, my best friend, Danny Bennett, which is called the Hell Ming Power Hour, which is uh, the best way to describe that show is it's entertaining, but we lie about everything. <laughs> <laughs> the synopsis for movies is fake. The reviews are fake. Uh, the movies are real, and but we basically give you our top five to ten reasons of why to check out a movie and why we think it's awesome. Uh, and I think it's kind of kind of play into kind of what we're trying to do here because it's just waxing nostalgia uh, for Billy and I both. And, and Billy and I both have a, a lot in common. So this is going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, Hell Ming's out there. You've got uh, another show called Short Bus Cinema, which is where me and the infamous Johnny Krug, uh, we try to find the worst movie ever made. And uh, we call it the Holy Grail of Bad Movies. So we're trying to do that. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, I've got a horror show as well called House of Wax, uh, which also has Johnny Krug and, and a new guy on there named Levi Garrett. Yes, folks, that's his real name. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the first questions we had. So is this like a stage name? Just, no, that's what my parents called me. <laughs> so uh, that's a lot of fun. And I've done several different little solo shows here and there and, and uh, just trying to find uh, new and exciting things to do and, and – uh, this came about because, well, we're locked up. We can't do anything, and I sent Billy a, a new idea. So when I sent that idea to you, you were like, hold the presses. Why don't we do mm-hmm. something? Absolutely. <laughs> and here we are. Absolutely, here we are. And um, some of you might say, hey, I know Scary Dad, but I have never heard that voice before. And so <laughs> I've been excuse me i was uh i was sequestered for a while and um without getting into the the nasty details of it all i had i had a voice that was kind of going out like a bad motor and um went and saw the doctor and he fixed it and so now i have a voice that sounds not a whole whole like a whole new compared to apparently what it used to sound like so, um, but the, the, the fun part about that was as a guy who likes to be on podcasts, who's in sales, I tell jokes, I'm always doing something. I had to be quiet for like three straight weeks, actually closer to four and a half straight weeks. I couldn't really talk. And, um, when I say I couldn't really talk, like I shouldn't try to talk and that's fair enough, except for like, I physically couldn't do it. And it was really really weird uh, so um i'm not 100 percent back but i'm a whole lot better than i was before i went under so um we'll we'll talk about more more about <laughs> that like um what not 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 what surgery is like because surgery i don't know they just said hey check this out and then wake up yeah um but count, what count, what it's like count from 10 to, to be, 1 <laughs> yeah to, to, but what it's like to wake up and be completely different than you know, what you were when you went to sleep. That's that's odd. That'll be a different show. <laughs> that might be a Walking Dead episode or something. Because honestly, I went to sleep and I woke up and then the world was going into panic. Uh, <laughs> kind of crazy. So instead of talking about that, we were going to talk about something else. So 
for the first episode of this show, we've decided we're going to go with the seminal 1984 classic coming of age movie, The Karate Kid. Yes! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> and I've been wanting to watch this, but it's not actually, I'm sure it is, but let me let me throw back this little bit of tidbit like we, we've been under quarantine or not under quarantine but under like voluntary lockdown for seven days on day three my children broke the tv so i had <laughs> i had to buy a new tv which was not inexpensive and and then i don't know how it happened i probably did it but today i broke my stove so <laughs> Like it's it's been odd, but I wanted to watch the Karate Kid, and I we kept not being able to find it, and I think that might have been the first step of the TV not working. But uh, Rick <laughs> Rick sent me a copy, and it worked on the new TV, so Yay! everything's great. <laughs> and we got to watch that. I got to watch it with my nine year old. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm anxious to see what she thought because I knew you were going to do that because they haven't seen it before. Okay, so let me start by saying that my daughter's favorite person on in all universes is Darth Vader. Wow. She identi- she identifies with the bad guy. She like like her favorite character out of all the Star Wars movies is Kylo Ren. She likes the bad guy. Yeah. So she got frustrated because <laughs> at the beginning Daniel only kind of fakes knows karate. Right. And he gets in a fight with the other guys who do know karate. And they whoop his butt. <laughs> and then the one guy starts calling. He's like, calls Daniel. He's like, hey, karate kid. Juliet right. was like, like, they shouldn't be calling that till he knows karate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, missing the car- sarcasm. <laughs> and, you know, and so then as Mr. Miyagi's making him do a bunch of chores, she's like, when's, she, when's he going to teach her? When she, when's he going to start <laughs> teaching karate? This, this show sucks. It's like just chores. <laughs> she, she was mad. And then finally, I, she got up and left before the tournament. Like she didn't get to watch. The, she didn't watch the tournament. Oh. But she was she was all pissed off because she was like, "Dude, if they wanted to call this movie the Karate Kid, it should have been about the blonde guy because he knows karate." <laughs> and I was just like, "Okay, <laughs> this is such a different perspective on things." Because <laughs> she identified with Johnny. She was like, "Yeah, he's actually the guy who knows karate, so it should have been about him." <laughs> Well, come on, man. I mean, this is a guy that can wear a headband no matter what what type of uh, clothing that he's wearing. The headband is pretty much just a given. He's going to uh-huh. wear it just about everywhere. So you got to give him props, man. I mean, the, the red jacket on the motorbike. I mean, the dude's even wearing a motorcycle helmet, but he's still got the headband on underneath. Oh, know? yeah. Got to give it to well, him. <laughs> John, Johnny would have been pretty much, I mean, the... Even at the end, when Daniel whoops him, like Johnny's like, "You're okay, man." He like high fives him and like picks right. him up and stuff. Um, Johnny's kind of like the reluctant bad guy, um, except for the beginning where he's just kind of a jerk over the girl. But right. um, you know, he's not he's not a horrible human. And well, we say it, that. The, the, but... Well, the movie makes him out to be like this horrible human, but like. Like uh, Mr. Miyagi says, he's like, there are no bad students. There's just bad teachers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. But you got to remember, in 80s terms, man, a bad guy oh. is somebody that will run over your ba- your boom box with a motorcycle. Oh, yeah. That's about as oh, evil a thing a, you can do back then. He's certainly a bad guy. <laughs> he was, <laughs> he, he's just a little... My wife walks in, she's like, what are all these guys, 30? <laughs> <laughs> Except for Daniel, who is probably the oldest one of the of the right. all of them all. Right? <laughs> Isn't it funny too, going back and watching now? Because even like his mom, in your mind, mm. she seemed a lot older when you were a kid. But when you watch her now, you're like, man, she wasn't that old at all. <laughs> yeah. No, she's single mom. So like, he's in his teens. She's probably in her like mid to late thirties, maybe. At best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just, and just, she's not as bad. Like you remember, you remember her being kind of just a little bit more nagging. Whereas yeah. if you watch it now, she's she's nagging but hopeful. Right. Like, hey, let me see what your eye looks like. What's wrong with you? You're like, like that's a pretty good mom. Whereas <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember she's like just 
like she, she wasn't bad, but she was just annoying. You're like, come on, mom, get off my back. Like well, yeah. in reality, you're like, no, you're not going out like that. Like right. you, somebody beat your ass. I'm calling the principal. <laughs> right. like, you're staying home. <laughs> But yeah, man, what a great perspective from from a, a a young kid checking it. Of course, that's funny because you look at where Cobra Kai kind of picks up and where it goes from. That's probably what your daughter needs to watch because she's like, "Yeah, this makes sense." <laughs> yeah, and I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. I know it's on Netflix. Uh, um, you, you got to, but you got to. Yeah. Well, it's like we were talking about before. Like, I completely blanked on part three. I know I've yeah. seen part three, but like, I like I remember one and two. Yeah, in in my life, like those were a big deal. Yes, and they were. What, we, what, what what again? One of the things that kind of formed the show is when I was when I was a little kid. So when Karate Kid came out, it was eighty four. So it would have come out in probably summer of eighty four. That would have made me eight years old. And the difference, but like I have a nine year old, so the difference between being eight in the eighties and being nine in the in the early twenties yeah. is. Man, Karate Kid, my buddy, his dad had a VCR and he had movies. He had like three or four movies written down on a, on a tape. And we watched Karate Kid and like we'd go spend the night and we'd watch Karate Kid and we'd go outside on the on the trampoline and just kick each other in the face. <laughs> just just flying, I mean, assisted trampoline jump kicks like right in the chest and like knock each other off that trampoline in the middle of the night. Right. Like... Every now and then we'd make too much noise and somebody would be like, Hey, y'all, <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. Down, go, I don't go care to sleep, if you kick yourself to, to death, just uh, yeah. don't keep me awake. <laughs> and that was a significant difference between then and now. Is yeah. They'd call the cops on you. They're like, Oh my God, there's these children that are killing each other. Like, well, they've got a, they got a baby fight club in the backyard. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I have been watching uh, a series on Netflix, which I'm not going to mention. But in the captions at the beginning, as far as the warnings of the show, you got things like you know nudity, sexual violence, all these things, and then smoking's up there. You know, it's just like <laughs> yeah. how things have changed when you warn a, a watcher that hey, there's going to be smoking in this in this show. So, so, <laughs> You're like, really? <laughs> somebody on this show is smoking. Yeah, it, like. <laughs> It, Incredible. It, it, it gets crazy. Um, I've, I mean, if they were shooting up heroin, it wouldn't say anything. But if you're smoking, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the b- bizarre thing is, um, I guess it was 2018, so a year and a half ago, I guess, I was in Seattle. And in Washington State, marijuana is legal yeah. for recreation. Like, you can just walk down the street and buy some and whatever. And there are, like, the street smells like pot yeah it's it smells like a skunk and there are signs posted talking about how you're not allowed to smoke cigarettes within 25 <laughs> feet of an, of, a, of an entrance of a building and it's a 500 hundred dollar fine for tossing your butt on the ground and i'm like okay so in this weird world like where, where like marijuana, there's entire Miami Vice episodes about how bad that stuff is. Right. While they're smoking and busting the bad guys, like how are they going to retcon all of this? Because <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, like it's okay to smoke weed all day long, but don't you smoke a cigarette next to this right. building, or else, yeah, <laughs> it's it's bizarre. But oh. I don't know. You 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 grow into you grow into strange worlds. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, man, this this movie, you know, I I got to watch it again earlier today. Haven't seen it in a while, and again, you do forget how big this was. I mean, not only the first movie, but you've got four in the series, right? You got three mm-hmm. that has Daniel in, and then the fourth is like a reboot with where he's teaching a girl, right? So, and then you get the total reboot, which happened just a few years back with Jackie Chan in there. But you know what? What a legacy! from a movie that's basically a teen version of Rocky is kind of the best way to describe it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what it was for us. It was our being the underdog teenager who finds Elizabeth Shue. Oh, Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> I mean, the perfect girl next door, right? I mean... Of course. And, you know, the, the story of, you know, fighting back, beating the bullies, being taken in, being trained, 
and in two months' time, being able to whip everybody that's been doing karate for, you know, 15 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there was definitely a whole lot of stretches of the imagination. Mr. Miyagi <laughs> was just that cool. I, I also remember be, being being a kid and just thinking that Mr. Miyagi's backyard yes. was – that that was the epitome. Like, yeah. I think even now, like, I think now, like, watching this movie, because I haven't watched it in a really long time, and we have a new puppy – and a couple of days ago, my wife was like, hey, go buy some uh, sod for the backyard. I was like, we're not buying sod for the backyard. That's just, the dog's just going to eat it. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no sod. It's just like, you chose mud. You chose mud by having a dog. That's what you get. But man, with the ponds and the, the, the raised yeah. uh, platforms and the little decking and all the flowers and everything, I think that's my ultimate retirement goal. Yeah. Is to just like... And, and kind of like Miyagi, like have a junkyard full of classic cars that run, <laughs> that you're not selling for any specific reason, but they're just there and awesome. I think yeah. that would be a, a another really good retirement goal. Yeah. It always bugged me that Daniel chose that weird looking. I mean, the, the car that he has when it's separated from the pack is badass. Right. But when it's sitting with all the others, there are so many other cool cars to choose from. <laughs> yeah, this this one had the more rounded body style of an older car versus the other ones had the like the '60s cuts in the in the hoods and all that stuff, you know. So yeah, yeah it was kind of a kind of an odd choice, but hey, he kind of that's the car you you notice first when he first walks on the lot. So I think it just that's kind of fits with you that way. So, and just that whole scene where he's giving him the car for his birthday after he makes him you know do all the work on everything, but uh, there's a level of depth into this movie that I've totally forgot about. And it's weird because I've, I've raised my daughter all of her life. And I, I want to go back and show her this part because my whole speech to her, her whole life has been about balance in your life. Everything mm. is about balance, you know, uh, the good and the bad. And it's all got to, you know, as long as the good is outweighing the bad, that's your balance in life. And you have to have that balance. And it's also about being consistent in who you are, you know, and these are the things that I preached to her her whole life. And I go back and watch this movie, and dang, if I didn't really sub <laughs> subconsciously take it from Miyagi telling Daniel, hey, life is about balance. And I was, I, it just floored me while I go when I saw it. I was like, I can't believe I've been teaching <laughs> a, a, a piece of <laughs> Mr. Miyagi my whole life to my daughter, you know, because... That's what I believe. I believe, you know, life is totally about balance. That's the way you make it through this crazy thing. And it's right right there in this movie. And the level of depth of Miyagi's character losing his wife when he's in the army and, and you know, the, the death. And, and then Daniel, say, I never even really picked up on that either. He's basically, Daniel's the son that he didn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 never, I, I never caught that as a teen. But now I look at him and I'm like, man, this is totally what's going on right here. Well, I think what you're talking about is, you know, I, I was blessed. You know, I had I had both my parents, you know, yeah. they were they were there and they were present. And I was but man, most most of my friends growing up didn't have one or the other. Right. And, you know, now that, that was one of those things where it was poignant for a I, I didn't I didn't it didn't occur to me whenever I was a kid, you know, kicking my friends in the face because the karate kid was awesome but you know it's like yeah daniel's the the son he never had but also you know uh miyagi is the father right you always you always that was one of those things about this movie that it out i mean mm -hmm. i think there's a couple of others maybe like american ninja or something where <laughs> it's like you're just some kid that lives on a street and you stumble into this mysterious place where they're like, okay, well, you shouldn't have come here, but now we're going to make you right. something better than human. Yeah. Um, obviously, Mr. Miyagi is a whole lot softer. <laughs> like he's, <laughs> he's not he's not teaching you how to, to, to stab people with a sword. Um, but which, you know, you might need that when the ninjas just do jump out, because they did a lot in the 80s. You never knew whenever, like, 18 ninjas would just drop and start yeah. Yeah. start, start wrecking shop on you. So that's <laughs> a good stuff, good thing to know. <laughs> but yeah, man, everybody wanted a guy down the street 
to be a secret Mr. Miyagi who's just right. going to tell you that everything is going to be okay. Here's some karate. Here's a, here's not much karate, but enough to kick everybody's ass. Right, right. <laughs> because that was amazing. Like I never realized. <laughs> Well, we will talk about this one in a long, in, in, in a different episode, but like the Lost Boys. Yeah. Yeah. It never occurred to me that the Lost Boys, like we we did a show on it on Scary Night. I always thought the Lost Boys took place over the course of a summer. Mm. I didn't realize it was over the course of a weekend. Of a weekend, yeah. Because the evolution of the characters is such that you just don't really realize that it's happening that fast. You think like, oh, you know, he's starting to wear sunglasses. He's starting to be a little bit weird. And it's going to take three or four days and five or six days and eight or ten. No, it's just like, boom. Yeah. And so like with, with Karate Kid, it's like. A month yeah, and he, a half? That's a month and a half. <laughs> From it's Halloween like, karate, till. Karate Kid tournaments on the wall. And December he's like, yeah, night. We'll kick your... <laughs> we'll kick your ass on that day. <laughs> like, let, let me let me train this one kid who's kind of skinny and kind of a jerk to beat everybody's ass in a row all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the, the the techniques too because you gotta love well Mr. Miyagi Pat Morita's character in this because not only do you have when he gets serious you see the wisdom. But half mm. the time, the wisecracking stuff, too. It's like, okay, uh, so what do I do now? Oh, just go out there and try to kick some waves coming at you. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. just making stuff up, you know. Uh, stand of on course. the front of the boat there and just try to keep your balance. <laughs> Don't disturb <laughs> the fish, you know. You got to love that stuff. And then when you finally see what it's all for, you know, it's it's giving him the reps, right? The repetitions of wax on, wax off, all these things. So you're training without training. It's almost a Bruce Lee men mentality of mm -hmm. the art of fighting without fighting, you know? And uh, you got to love that. I mean... <laughs> That's why my daughter was like, this movie's about tours. <laughs> I'm like, dude... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to real life. What? Guess what happens when you turn 15? That's right. Chores. <laughs> yep. It's, it's time for chores. <laughs> All right, so we got to move on to the next segment, which is everything else. Yeah! <laughs> we don't we we don't have a whole lot of time, so we gotta we gotta cover everything else. So, what are your final thoughts on Karate Kid? Um, does it does it deserve the sequels that it got? Does it deserve all of the accolades? Does it deserve to have wax on wax off? And be a people who never saw that movie. Yeah, quote that movie. That or sweep so the leg or I mean it's it's yeah. got its catchphrases. I There's think it's it's a huge slice of eighties Americana, man. It it's it's the thing that every young boy wishes to happen. It's not only being able to defend yourself and, and gain the father you didn't have, but finding the girl of your dreams and it all being rolled up into one package with Banana Rama singing in the background. I mean, you know, there's some solid songs on this soundtrack as well. It, it's it's a home run and I think it's a real good representation. I think people's minds are kind of jaded when they have like 80s parties and the way they dress and stuff. Mm -hmm. Watch this movie, man, because it is dead up what people dressed like back in that time. And uh, I don't know, man. I think it's still solid. I think uh, anybody can enjoy it. I don't think you have to have a new version of it. It still speaks to the heart of what the whole the whole story is about. So I, I think it's a it's a modern classic of sorts. I don't I, know. I, what, I don't know anybody I, that I, doesn't I, like it. I was it, gonna say I, I totally agree. I, there was not there's there's a lot of movies that have a filler parts. Right. It's like, and we're not talking about the montage, but we're just having that like kind of weird pensive look into the water where a character is trying to figure out themselves. There seems to be a lot of those kind of movies these days where sure. it's like they 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 ordered a hour and a half and they only had like an hour and 20 minutes worth of story to tell. So then they had to yeah. extend it. Karate Kid was two hours long. And I, it was weird because whenever I press play, which you didn't used to see whenever it was v, VHS, you press right. play and it started at one and just went until it ended the um it was two hours long wow. it 
it doesn't played, seem like it. Yeah. It doesn't. It it plays it like everything in it is high and tight. Every scene, every scene is needed. All of the little details that I'm thinking as a as an editor or producer, you might cut that matters. Like whenever Daniel's mom gets up and walks away, she she asks him about the girl, and Daniel doesn't want to reply because it's his mom, and he's just kind of like, well, I'm not gonna really tell you. And then she's like, oh well, I gotta go, and he, she hops up and bounces, yeah. and then he just starts talking about the girl. Right. Like, I think in a lot of modern movies, that wouldn't be there. They'd right. cut that, probably that whole restaurant scene out. Even though you notice the, the, the karate guys in the background yeah. noticing the bike, and they're like, okay, we're going to jump him around the back corner whenever he leaves. But he just has this moment of being like, you know, she's awesome, she's pretty, you know, like, I like her. Those little details, that kind of stuff that just humanizes the whole movie and right. makes it all, it's not about karate even though, according to Juliet, it should have been more about karate. <laughs> but um... <laughs> and how about the... that the abrupt ending too? Because you know, it's like he holds the trophy, goes woohoo, and it shows Pat Rita, and it just cuts off. Becky yep, was like, my done. wife was, my wife was like, is that the way it ends? <laughs> I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Of course, he was. Pat Morita was just on Happy Days before that, so yeah. it wasn't like he was well known as as the the guy well the ton just... of crap that he made he made a lot of bad b movie appearances and stuff and then this one is like his home run and he's perfect mhm was it pat marita that was in uh, the wonder woman episode about the japanese uh it's very possible i don't i don't know it wasn't him and that was the the main guy but i think he was one of them yeah it i think like... it's very possible <laughs> so let's move to everything else so, we don't have to talk about the entire year but i made some notes of some things to chat about yeah 1983 Cat! and the the, the the fun part about this show is we might not even talk about a movie we might talk about a show Cat! we might talk about a toy Cat! we might talk about a guitar Cat! A guitar player, yeah. guitar player who was in a band, yeah. who so I don't know. We're just gonna talk about whatever. Eighties porn so, stars, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. dude. Have you noticed the mustache growth? I'm working on it. <laughs> you get that, you get that Harry Reams going, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but just to talk about 1984. So you had Karate Kid. Then when you move over to records. Oh gosh! Like, yeah, there's a big old list of them. Insane. So one one thing of note, I didn't realize i I would have assumed that this one. I thought this was later, but Iron Maiden, Power Slave. Yes. In in eighty four, yeah. I would have thought that was. I thought that might have been further up, but oh yeah. No, well, man, well, I, I remember not, that not further, a, like not that, further back, further up, further just, up, like eighty two, something like that. I like maybe eighty six, something. Oh, like that, oh, cause, I mean, that it was, was okay. Yeah, because it was so. There's just so much Maiden yeah. on that record. Yes, it is. My favorite, by so, the way. That's my favorite Maiden. Power album. Slave's amazing. Yeah. Tell um, me why I have to be a Power Slave. <laughs> <Yeah>! That's. <laughs> So my six year old's favorite band is still Iron Maiden. Yes. Because of uh Run to the Hills. Yeah. Which and that's her favorite. So she's like, Dad I'm like, Well, I'll yeah, let me play it. <laughs> okay, so also nineteen eighty four, I wasn't old enough to really know them. I didn't know Metallica until oh, yeah. uh Injustice for All. Yeah. Which was in you know, eighty nine. But um, Ride the Lightning. Yeah. Real, real Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> the old Metallica. The good Metallica. <laughs> right. Um, before they started talking about their feelings. That's. <laughs> I th- like, you, like you, you built a certain wall around yourself. And people are like, the way I feel is kind of sad. You're like, well, you don't deserve to say it. You need to scream it on stage with the guitar. <laughs> You're not allowed to just say it. Get back to the Yeah. Bedroom. At the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> bon Jovi's first record came out in 84 I would have thought that came out sooner considering their 
big success right in uh late but good solid hey. uh first album too man i mean it it didn't do as well as it should but i remember seeing the video for she don't know me was the first thing i saw and i thought okay this guy's a superstar I didn't know who he was, but I could just tell from immediate. It was that hairdo, man. <laughs> <laughs> bon Jovi's a good-looking guy, and, and, and the, the songs are very well-made songs. It, it kind of creeps me out that Bon Jovi's had a bass player that was never seen because he was just like this dude. <laughs> he, he was just a studio musician that was not interested in in touring, and right. he wouldn't have anyway because he didn't have the hair. He's just kind yep. of a heavy set guy. He's but. If that He's could have like, only if he if that could have only been the keyboard player, <laughs> right? But this dude's just like holding down the and and the bass player for Bon Jovi got kicked out for being wasted. And it's like how wasted do you have to be to not have to play the instrument? <laughs> like, you just show up and lean yourself against a wall and get kicked out. Like <laughs> that's like Guns N' Roses kicking Steven Adler out because he's got a drug problem, <laughs> right? Thought it was a requirement, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't doing drugs before I auditioned for the band. <laughs> so I did them to make sure I got in. So on the flip side, while we got Power Slave coming out, we've also got Careless Whisper by George Michael being the number one song That's, uh... That's one of those, it's like, now to be fair, also Wake Me Up by Wham, which is another sure. George Michael song. Yeah. That, that was number two or three. Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cindy Lauper. Sure. And then Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Oh, yeah. So the 80s were a strange time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, without a doubt. I mean, and the, uh, the beauty of it, though, why it was a strange time is because MTV was only two or three years old at this point. So everybody had the mad dash of making videos and getting them on MTV. Possibly the greatest time ever. If, if mm -hmm. you were, I mean, just to experience the, the early years of MTV and how it was changing so rapidly. And you went from... Whitney Houston and Kenny Loggins owning radio airwaves and it turned into Quiet Riot <laughs> and Def Leppard and, and Scorpions. It's like, how did this change even happen? And we're sitting right here. It's like it's like you just woke up one day and changed channel. Okay, all that music is gone. Now it's this. It's like, wow. It, it, well, the thing is, and it's, it's weird because me talking to my child and her vision of what Karate Kid should be, I remember having a conversation with my dad my dad played, or he was a uh, radio DJ. He played records. He was a, he was not a DJ. He was a disc jockey right. on a radio station in the late seventies, and he would talk about how you know you you used to have top forty, and that would have Motown, it would have Led Zeppelin, and it would have like John Denver, like kind of yeah. everything, like anything that was was charting was all kind of lumped together on the same station. And, and they did have like, okay, if it was rock and roll and R and B, it was on a station. Maybe you'd have country was a different one, right? but pretty much anything that was defined as rock and roll was, yeah, here you go. And you, you had several stations, but they were all playing the same thing. And then things started getting broken up and segmented out and, you know, this is this is pop and rock and rock and heavy metal and, yeah. you know, whatever. MTV, that was exactly the same thing. Yes. It's like, we don't care what it is. Yep. Make it interesting and we'll put it on. That was in the early 80s, early 90s. Same thing. Nirvana broke through. Grunge sure. broke through. Record, record companies were like, I don't care what you do. Just be cool. Right. And there was a lot of strange bands that didn't push further out than their their one song, but you saw that. And then MTV went away. They started just playing reality shows and pregnant teen shows and stuff. Like, I don't, I don't think MTV... Well, maybe they do realize now. Maybe it just wasn't worth the money, but how much life 
like identify how many how many people just identified with who they were and what they were absolutely yeah it it was it was what you modeled your life after as a teen in the 80s because you were getting to see how people in other parts of the United States or whatever lived. I mean, you had American Bandstand and things like that before, but this was like you were getting a bigger picture of what's actually going on, and you're getting to see these bands that you wouldn't see on American Bandstand. I mean, you're not going to see Judas Priest, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, that video of uh, you got another thing coming with the laser light behind them and all that kind of stuff. I mean, these are those images that are forever ingrained in your head. I mean, how can you not hear... Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins and not see the montage of the, the jets flying in the video. Uh, it, it just made... It, Cindy Lauper, when you said girls just want to have fun, the video pops in your head. Mm-hmm. You can't think of Thriller without the video popping in your head. So, I mean, it it made such a difference in the way you perceive music or receive music, I guess. Uh the visual is is such a part, and now it's like we've kind of gone opposite of that because now there really is no visual. Uh, maybe Lady Gaga is something you can think of that has tried to do something visual. Everything else now, there's no push video wise to promote yeah, anything. Yeah, videos videos are only on YouTube, and yeah, that that's usually you know YouTube has. There, I mean, there's a renaissance though. Excuse me. Um, the band gunship yeah they 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 create and craft video lovers videos for their song right. Right. um the midnight they cobble a bunch of old 80s movies together and make a really cool video so i mean there are those that that love it there's guys like us that sit around and talk about like oh man <laughs> the good old days <laughs> the good old days like yeah all right, so we're not exactly sure what we're going to call this thing yet. We're going to call it something tomorrow. We're going to continue to talk about the name. If you're listening to this, actually, you can look at what the title is and find <laughs> out what we decided. Um, I might come in and cut it in later. I'll, I'll, it'll depend on <laughs> on what I can do. But I'm, um, I'm really pushing for the Rick Morgan show. That's just me, though. That sounds good to me. Just put a big old capital R on there. Yeah, the Rick Morgan oh. show featuring Rick Morgan. I mean, that, that sound it's got a ring to it. Yeah! <laughs> they should have called the parrot the, the 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 apocalypse the bunghole. <laughs> like, it's, not, it's not the coronavirus. It's the bunghole. <laughs> do, 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 oh my do, do my corona. <laughs> right? It's it's everybody's like, ah, here we get TV. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a respiratory uh, problem, but hey, at least I've got enough Charmin to last, you know. <laughs> I've seen a cool meme which is uh Doc coming back in the card to Michael J. Fox and saying, Hey, I've been to the year 2045 and they still got toilet paper left over from 2020 (laughs) i imagine man it's 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 this is the weirdest apocalypse ever we we've talked about like dude we've watched every scary movie that's ever been put out every apocalyptic every like we've watched it we know how these things play out i saw this thing coming a mile away i was like oh my god yeah. Even if the virus isn't that bad, people are going to freak out and start buying crap. If you would have bet me, like, what are they going to freak out and buy? I would have been like, dry beans. <laughs> right. Rice. Yeah. Potato chips. Yeah. Toilet paper? <laughs> nah. <laughs> like, scoot back, scoot back, reshuffle. <laughs> Let's figure this out. So it's been a weird apocalypse, man. Yeah, you know, toilet paper is is a is a luxury. Uh, I hate to disappoint some listeners out there. If you're a a <laughs> stockpiler of toilet paper, it's a luxury, folks. I mean, you got to remember, till about I don't know, less than a hundred years ago, there was no such thing as toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Probably not even that long ago. So people survived, you know, a few thousand years without it. So you know. It, it's it's it just boggles the mind of why that's the <laughs> thing to go, you know. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> well, we're and I'm almost out, so let's go <laughs> ahead. 
let, let's tell everybody we'll see you next time and uh we'll see you next week i guess yeah absolutely see you folks later <laughs>